Hello, and here is your daily devotion for Tuesday, March 24th, 2020. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, the fourth chapter, beginning with the uh, fourth verse. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves as your servant for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. So this is a powerful passage, and among people who have read 2 Corinthians, this is typically one of their favorite passages of the entire book, because it talks about particularly the jar of clay and how God's treasure, God's glory, God's power is hidden in a jar of clay, by which Paul refers to not merely the fragility of the human body, but its ordinariness and how most of us really don't appear to be or seem exceptional in any way. And yet this is where God chooses to hide his glory. It's very easy to think that God's power is most manifest in what is large, what is big and beautiful and impressive. Um, And I'm sorry to say the Christian culture seems to buy into this idea a little bit too much, or that if you really have the spirit, if you really have the power of God at work in your life, then you're also young and visually attractive and always happy and always cheerful and smiley in a very kind of fakey sort of way. And it doesn't communicate the gospel very well. It says we're just like the world. We look at the outward appearance, and if the outward appearance isn't exactly what we want, we move on. When Paul talks about hiding treasure in a jar of clay, he's saying that people would put their treasure back in those days in very ordinary-looking containers that were not much different from things they might have used for flour or olive oil or other staples of life. Ordinary containers, indistinguishable from everything else around them. This is where God hides his treasure. God hides his treasure and his power in what is not unusual, in what is ordinary and plain. People like us. And that treasure is the light of the gospel. Not incredible power, not big, beautiful buildings, not wonderful music, but in ordinary people doing extraordinary things, all in the name of Christ. We're all being pressed and stretched in ways we don't want to be right now. I think we're beyond aware of that. We're all living with a great deal of uncertainty. But what we also have to realize is we may feel small. We may feel insignificant. We may feel like the world has passed us by or doesn't want anything from us. But we are exactly the sort of vessel that God has always chosen to put his treasure in. That's you. You have the capacity to do great good and to break forth the light of the gospel into a world that desperately needs to see it, particularly now. So be excellent. Be kind to others. Be generous. Be amazing. And don't think that just because you're an ordinary person that you can't do anything beautiful for God. Because here Paul is telling us, That God hides his greatest treasure in the ordinary, not in the incredible, not in the awe-inspiring, but in the ordinary. Today, in addition to our usual prayers for the victims of COVID-19 and for the healthcare providers, let's also pray for parents and children who have found their lives entirely disrupted. I think many of you know that children are largely creatures of habit, and when their usual patterns are broken, at first it's fun, but after a few days it's not too good, and sooner or later, They're among the first who say, can't things just go back to normal? So let's remember them in our prayers today. Let us pray. 
We thank you, Heavenly Father, for placing your treasure in ordinary clay jars like us. We pray that we would be found worthy of holding that treasure, but not holding that treasure for ourselves. Rather, holding your glory and your power to give away to others. Even in this time of separation and sheltering, Lord, may we find a way to share your glory today. We pray for those who are struggling with COVID-19, for the patients, for those who have died, for their families. We pray for the healthcare workers at every level who are dealing with this unprecedented challenge. And we think of the parents, many of whom still have to work while also trying to educate and watch their children, and the children who don't understand why so much has been upended and why nothing is the way it normally is. We pray that parents and children would use this time to grow closer together, and that you give everyone at every level the extra measures of patience they're going to need to get through a difficult time. Yet we do not despair, but look forward in hope, because we know it's ordinary people like us who hold your greatest treasure, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow.